a hidden gem that travelers often overlook, a country that has remained in the shadows of popular destinations like Indonesia, Thailand, and Australia. Brace yourself for an adventure as we embark on a journey through the captivating landscapes of the Philippines. Imagine stepping onto pristine beaches where the sand glistens like pure gold, caressed by turquoise waves that invite you to dive deep into their depths. The rhythmic sway of lush jungles beckons as the island and coast are teeming with life and mystery. In this video, we're going to prove that the Philippines is the ultimate destination that belongs on every adventurer's bucket list. A land where stunning beaches, thriving jungles, and captivating wildlife intertwine, creating an unparalleled experience that will leave you breathless. Okay, so where do we start? Let's look at the map. 7,641 islands? We only have a one-month visa. How the heck are we going to choose which islands to go to? Well, I have been doing weeks of research and I have picked out some of the best places that we should spend our time. Our adventure begins on the island of Cebu in a small town called Mobile. But why start here? Well, we heard that there is some of the best snorkeling and diving on this island that is home to thousands of sardines. And oh my gosh, there definitely was. We ended up getting so lucky that the giant school of sardines happened to be hanging out right outside of our accommodation. Thanks to Sandbag Hideaway, we were able to rent some snorkeling gear and walk right out to the ocean, where we could swim to the sardines. <laughs> it was absolutely mesmerizing and probably one of the best experiences of our lives. Welcome to the Philippines, that's what I say, holy shit. Snorkeling with the sardines, a big group of them that all swim together in unison, and it was really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that we decided we needed to get even closer to them and go out scuba diving for the first time ever. I was very nervous about the action of diving, but it was simply incredible. And when it was over, I was not ready to get out of the water. Yeah, well, until we saw the sea snake. Three days of full snorkeling out here in Mobile, but also three for three of seeing sea snakes. So, gonna call it a day. No more sea snakes for me. These little creatures. Be aware of them because it turns out they are extremely venomous. As in, one of the most toxic snakes in the world. And as our diving instructor put it, if you get bitten by one, you die. As mesmerizing as it was to see the sardines in the crystal clear water, we couldn't help but notice that the coral reef, once vibrant with colors and endless with marine life, is now a shell of what it once was. Swimming out from shore, it was impossible to miss the endless coral skeletons. When you see the real life ones that are vibrant in colors, that's where all the fish are, that's where you can see the life of the ocean, but... It's a rarity here. It's, it's the same. We'll never know it, Morgan. We don't know what this used to look like. Nope. These sensitive creatures are susceptible to rising ocean temperatures, higher carbon dioxide levels, pollution runoff, and overfishing. Luckily, the Philippines has established numerous marine protected areas, and the country is actively engaged in rehabilitation and restoration efforts. With these, I'm trying to stay hopeful for the future of our oceans. After all the snorkeling and diving, we decided to take a break from the adventure and go canyoneering at Kawasan Falls. Okay, so maybe it wasn't a relaxing break. We were being kicked headfirst down waterfalls, literally. Two, three. 
<laughs> so, Kawasan Falls Canyoneering is a super fun activity that consists of jumping off of multiple waterfalls, swimming, hiking, walking behind the waterfalls, and let's not forget to mention that the water is incredibly blue. I even faced some of my fears of cliff jumping. On our last day in Mobile, we actually decided to relax a bit and spend the day enjoying the beach. That's ice cream. That's more. Off we go, a nice bus ride to Oslo. To swim with the whale sharks. And to be completely transparent about this part of our trip, we were a little bit ignorant going into this activity. At the time, we didn't understand the full situation here in Oslo. So they created this activity a few years back, and it has massively helped the local economy and the extreme poverty that existed in this area before these tours started which is great, don't get me wrong, but there's nothing natural about this activity. The whale sharks are a migratory species that lurk the tropical oceans of the world. In Oslo, they began feeding a group of whale sharks to keep them here year long. Obviously, this can come with some complications. It disrupts natural patterns, changes behaviors, and introduces malnutrition for an endangered species. There have been debates over this controversy for years now, trying to decide if it is ethical or not. It is difficult to prove that this is inherently a negative impact on the sharks, but there's a conversation to be had. Oslo is taking hundreds of tourists out every day, and they're just becoming more known for this around the world. And many tourists don't even follow the rules, it's just becoming a bit chaotic. It was a beautiful experience to see these creatures, but we just would have preferred it to be on their own terms and in the wild. There are plenty of options to see whale sharks in the world that don't inhibit their natural process. With that being said, do your research, don't be ignorant like us, back to the trip. And just an easy boat ride over to Pangalau, right? Jake, what are you doing? Where are we? We just got to Panglao Island. Ah, uh, yeah. That boat ride was intense, right? The boat ride was fine. You just fell asleep. Now come on, we have to check into our hostel. Panglao is a small island that is connected to the larger Bohol Island by bridge. Panglao and Bohol have a few things that make them stand out as a tourist destination. On Panglao, there are the beaches and amazing offshore snorkeling. Bohol is home to the natural formations called the Chocolate Hills, as well as a unique little creature, the Philippine Tarsier. 
We explored a few of these beaches on Panglao and found one of the most perfect sunset spots. We rented a motorbike so we could see the sights on Bohol, starting with the Tarsier Sanctuary. These little primates that are only found in Southeast Asia are no bigger than the size of your fist. And as it turns out, they are the creature that inspired Yoda. Yes, the little green guy in Star Wars. Grogu. These nocturnal creatures hide in the shade of the trees during the day and come out at night to feed on insects, lizards, and even birds. Unfortunately, the species is endangered and their most notorious predator is the common cat. Cue the Tarsier sanctuaries to aid in the preservation of the species. And then off to the pointy grass covered hills. <laughs> no, the chocolate hills are not made out of chocolate, <laughs> darn but actually got their name from the fact that the grass turns brown during the dry season. They are a really surreal landscape. And as it turns out, the hills are actually coral deposits that were uplifted out of the sea and weathered into weird little pointy hills over thousands of years, of course. And nearing the end of our time on this island, we gave into a sales pitch from a local, and we took a boat over to Balakasag. And oh my gosh, we were in for a treat for some of the most spectacular views in the world. We are on the Virgin Island sandbar. In the ocean, off of Panglao Island. And the best part definitely had to be snorkeling in this crystal clear water with the endangered green sea turtle. After getting out of the water, we recognize that this culture of friendliness isn't isolated to the Philippines. Everyone was just incredibly friendly. A local from Balakasag, yes, there are about 350 families that live on this tiny little island, bought us a beer to tell us how tourism has helped their quality of life in the recent years. And then again, our tour guide on the way back to the island asked me to come sit on the front of the boat with them just to get a better view of the ocean. And again, back on Panglao, some kids even let me join in on their game of basketball. It may have been because everybody in the Philippines kept saying that I looked like Stephen Curry. No joke, it was at least 15 times. I don't necessarily see it, but regardless, the generosity of the Filipino people did not go unnoticed by us. While this has been an incredible journey of exploring, learning, and growing, we're not done yet. We have two more weeks in this country, and we're off to what has been described as the most beautiful island in the world, Palawan. Thank you to everyone we have met along this path in life. We will cherish these memories forever.